Welcome to Electron Online. In order again to gain a better understanding of differential equations, now we're going to look at what we call slope fields and the associated solution curves with that. Remember, differential equations, unless we have initial condition that defines exactly what we're looking for, we end up with a general solution which could represent an infinite number of solutions, which in other words, there'll be an, a number of solution curves. And to get a, a pictorial feel for that, we're going to draw what we call slope fields. Now, we took a simple example of a differential equation, dy dx is equal to k times y, and you have to understand that the left side of the equation here really represents the slope of the function, right? If we're looking for y, we're trying to find the solution of function y, as a, which is a, a function of x, and uh, we're trying to find out what it looks like, we can say, well, we can figure out what the slope is everywhere on the xy plane because dy dx is indeed the slope. And of course, k could be any value, so to make things simple, let's just assign a particular value for k. Let, let's k equal 1. So we're going to take the assumption that k is equal to 1, which means that dy dx, the slope of the function, is simply equal to the value y. Okay, that means when y is 1, the slope is 1. When y is 2, the slope is 2. When y is 3, the slope is 3. When y is 1 half, the slope is 1 half. And if y is a negative number, the slope is a negative quantity. All right, let's go to every point on the xy plane and define what the slope looks like at those locations. So anywhere where y is equal to 1, the slope would be 1. That means the slope here would be 1, the slope here would be 1, here would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, like that. So everywhere along the line y equals 1, the slope is 1. Well, everywhere along the line y equals 2, the slope is equal to 2. So over here, the slope will be a little bit steeper. So it would look like this. And when y is equal to 3, the slope would be steeper again. And to make it a little bit easier to see, when y is equal to 1 half, the slope would be 1 half. So that would be kind of like this. And when y is equal to 0, the slope would be 0. So here on the x-axis, the slope would be 0. When y is equal to negative 1, the slope is negative 1. Oop, that would be a little steeper than that. Negative 1 is about like this. So you can see what the slope would look like anywhere along the y equals negative 1 line and the y equals negative 2 line. The slope would be steeper than that, kind of like this. And at y equals negative 3, the slope would be negative 3. So the slope would be looking like that at these locations. And now what we have here is we have what we call a slope field that shows you what the function would look like if we were to place it somewhere on the xy plane. And of course, this is assuming in this case that k is equal to 1. But what we can do then is we can say, well, if I want to draw the solution right here, then that's what the solution would look like. If I want to draw the solution right here, that's what the solution would look like. If I draw it right here, that's what the solution would look like. Over here, the solution would look like this. So I, all I have to do is follow the slope field, and it shows me what the solution to the differential equation would look like. If I assume that uh, on the negative side here, we can say that this is a possible solution, this is a possible solution, that's a possible solution, there's a possible solution. These are all possible solutions. Okay, so which one is the real solution? Well, it turns out they all are, because the general solution allows for any value for the constant of integration c, and only if I have a particular value for c or a particular initial condition, for example, let's say that at time equals zero, uh, y is one, then this would be the correct solution, and that would be then the particular so solution to the problem. But unless you're given the initial conditions, it could be any one of those. So that's what, we, that's what we call solution curves, and any one of them is a valid solution to the differential equation unless I'm given a particular initial condition that defines which solution then becomes the particular solution. But here you can visually see how drawing the slope field and then all the various solution curves that there's an infinite number of solutions to the one differential equation, and unless someone tells us what the constant of integration is based on initial conditions, that's the best way to represent all the various solutions to the differential equation. And that's how it's done.